Вы знаете, какие самые любимые... О, то есть у каждого есть любимая книга в Библии? Her favorite book, Bible. There are also uh, books that are loved by many or by most, and also being read by many or most. And I think it's uh, commonly known that the Psalms more or less are one of the most favorite books for the believers. And this is uh, valid both for Jewish and Christian believers because you can uh, pretty easily identify yourself with these texts and uh, just like to read them. The Psalms is a kind of an, a work of congregations or yeah, congregation or church in the sense of Israel. And in the people of Israel, in the history of Israel, in their very midst, these Psalms were written Even if they have an individual character, nevertheless, it is a product of the uh, Jewish, the Israeli community. And uh, also, by the way, the Psalms are not a monologue. In the Psalms, we find praise. We find uh, addressing God, speaking to God. We, fi we find the uh, speeches addressing others in the congregation, in the community. It's a dialogue on many levels. If there is a community of people, a community with, from community to God, and then there is also the relationship between individual to individual. So even if a psalm is not uh, talking to another individual, but is talking to God, there is nevertheless uh, someone who is uh, listening, someone who is receiving this text. So with this text you can agree, you may disagree, But in general, the community reacts to the words of the Psalms. This so far to the character of the Psalms. And in the Psalms, we find uh, different genres, different types. And there are Psalms that are sometimes called the Psalms of disorientation. If there is a um, disturbed balance in a person, and this is one of the reasons that the Psalms are that well liked, because uh, they are human, so there is anger, uh, hatred, uh, distraction, All this is part of our life. And our faith, our persuasion in the faith that we have tries to put this disorientation into the background. Because, of course, we are believers, we are doing well, we believe in God. And anger is uh, something bad. If you are afraid, then this is coming from Satan. Poor Satan, so much is addressed to him. Uh, confusion. 
Божий, у нас есть ориентир, у нас можно быть смятение. How can a believer be confused? We have the word of God, we have orientation, we cannot be confused. But all of this uh, shows up in the life of a person or as well in the community uh, of where this person is living. And therefore people in general like to read Psalms because uh, they can identify their lives pretty well with the Psalms. I would like to read a Psalm today and this Psalm belongs to this category of disorient disoriented. Uh, we first are going to read through it and then we gonna look at it in more detail. And it is Psalm 90, beginning in verse 1. A prayer of Moses, the man of God, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or a watch in the night. You've swept them away like a flood, they fall asleep in the morning, they are like grass with which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew, toward evening it fades and withers away. For we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath we have been dismayed, and you have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days have declined in your fury, we have finished our years like a sigh. As for the days of our life, they contain seventy days, or, if due to strength, eighty years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon is it gone, and we fly away. Who understands the power of your anger and your fury, <coughs> according to the fear that is due you? So teach us to number our days, that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Do return, O Lord, how long will it be, and be sorry for your servants. O satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days you have afflicted us, and the years we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your majesty to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. Denn unsere Missetaten stellst du vor dich, unsere unerkannte Sünde ins Licht vor deinem Angesicht. Darum fahren alle unsere Tage dahin durch deinen Zorn. Wir bringen unsere Jahre zu wie ein Geschwätz. Unser Leben äh, wäre 70 Jahre und wenn es hochkommt, so sind es 80 Jahre. Und was dann köstlich scheint, ist doch nur vergebliche Mühe. Denn es äh, fährt schnell dahin, als flügen wir davon. Wer glaubt aber, dass du so sehr zürnest und wer fürchtet sich vor dir in deinem Grimm? Lehre uns bedenken, dass wir sterben müssen, auf dass wir klug werden. Herr, kehre dich doch endlich wieder zu uns und sei deinem Knecht und gnädig. Fülle uns früh mit deiner Gnade, so wollen wir rühmen und fröhlich sein unser Leben lang. Erfolge uns nun wieder, nachdem du uns so lange plagest, nachdem wir so lange Unglück leiden. Zeige deinen Knechten deine Werke und deine Herrlichkeit ihren Kindern. Und der Herr, unser Gott, sei uns freundlich und hörte das Werk unserer Hände bei uns. There are different approaches, different way to approach this psalm. Very often people approach this psalm saying that this psalm is uh, talking about uh, vanity 
um, about yeah, passing away, dying. And there is also a philosophical approach that uh, everything passes away, fading away, and God is the only one who remains forever. Verse 12, for example, Martin Luther translated, teach us that we have to die and that we become smart. So this already shows what kind of a view he had. And many followed Luther uh, and they translated this way. So this is one approach. Teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. But there is also the Jewish approach. At least those who are in the commentary, in Jewish commentaries, that uh, emphasize the messianic uh, view. Okay, Jews that are not messianic at all, they stress the messianic meaning of this verse or this psalm. There is uh, the view that this psalm describes the suffering, the, the exile or being in exile of the nation. And uh, we will look at this psalm with this viewpoint that this psalm describes the suffering of the nation. We start in verse 1. A prayer of Moses, the man of God, Lord, you have been our dwelling place, our refuge in all generations. This word, Lord, is Adonai. Adonai, not in the meaning of the name of the Almighty, but just in the meaning of meaning Lord. It could as well be translated differently. You were our house, you were our dwelling place, you were our refuge from generation to generation. You were past tense. You were the place of our dwelling place from generation to generation. It is a prayer. It is a psalm speaking to the Almighty, saying you were our dwelling place, our home. And we continue, verse 2. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, we see the psalmist continues, uh, begins to say to, or to describe the Almighty. You are the origin, you are the source of everything that we can see. In the Bible that uh, I have uh, taken, there is a piece missing. I took the Bible from the shelf there. Because in the second half of the third verse in Russian, it is written. It is also written in the German Bible. Before the mountains were born, you are 
you are God from everlasting to everlasting and this word God is missing somehow. Maybe it was uh, just a typo. So the psalmist says, you are the God who created everything and from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn men back into dust and say, return, O children of men, verse 3. In the Psalms, uh, people don't talk to the Almighty as we do today. Today, we are friends. We are best friends with God. We come to Him and uh, start uh, getting rid of our problems. Or we were taught and uh, we know that uh, before we speak to him, we kind of shy approach him in a shy way. So first there is uh, praise and worship and then we ask. But this psalmist, he lives in all of this. For him, the Almighty is the source, the fountain of everything that exists and he is the king. And he is real, the one who is really in charge of everything, leading everything that the person, that man sees. It is raining, why is it raining? We have uh, meteorologists and they explain us uh, that we have these clouds and why then it is raining. But for the man at that time, uh, for them it was clear it is raining because the Almighty gave the rain. Uh, I walk, I stumble, why did I stumble? It, either the Almighty got uh, involved or I have influenced my life, I influence my destiny the way that I had to stumble. And therefore, the author uh, builds up a certain picture, an image showing his way of thinking, um, opposing things. Okay, the Almighty is uh, the source and the origin of creation. He is the creator. In verse 3, you turn men back into dust, you let people die, return. This is the way you planned it. It is the work of your hands that man is about to die or has to die. You say it and you have determined it. Verse 4, for a, a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passed by, or as a watch in the night. We know this, uh, we have this repetition in the epistle of uh, Peter, and uh, many take this verse literally. They say, okay, uh, creation is 1,000 years and one day, meaning, okay, God created in six uh, days, so this mean, meaning 6,000 years. Question is, is this uh, the case at all? Is this what it means? And uh, does it mean that one day is like 1,000 years? Depending on the commentaries that we read. In the Jewish tradition, in reality, yes, it is like this, also in the Christian uh, view. Uh, depending uh, 
who of the commentators we read and uh, depending on the time, modern times, uh, middle ages or medieval times. Anyway, the psalmist wants to show that 1,000 years are nothing for you, that the day yesterday, if there was something unimportant, uh, then we say, okay, this is an issue of yesterday, and uh, 1,000 years for him is like the day yesterday for the Almighty. And this is what the author wants to emphasize. You have been swept the, you have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep in the morning. They are like grass which sprouts anew. So this flood brings people away. They are like a dream. If we fall asleep and we wake up, what is our first thought? We haven't slept enough. No matter how much we slept anyway. Because we do not uh, realize uh, that our sleeping is uh, a certain time, but it's a uh, one point. We fall asleep and we wake up. Just two points and not a period of time. This is our perception. The grass that the author describes, it uh, grew and then all of a sudden it's away, it uh, withered away. The grass on which we walk. Who cares when we walk on uh, grass? We don't care, we don't see. And uh, yeah, we destroy the grass by walking on it. Doesn't matter, we just walk on it. Grass is something weak, something that uh, does not matter. Uh, and anything, everything that happens in the world influences the grass. So the author describes the surrounding in which he lives and he uses pictures, images that are filling his world. And he has an agricultural language. And this is normal because the author wants to show a very simple thought. Everything that there is, human beings, everything that surrounds them is nothing. Verse 7, for we have been, cons for we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath, we have been dismayed. We have to go, we are confused. The author describes the situation in which the people find themselves. We have said that a, a psalm is a product of the people of Israel when the people is either in exile or being persecuted or finding themselves in any other problem. The people are suffering. And therefore he says in verse 7 that it is your anger that we are consumed and it is your wrath that we have been dismayed. So we got discouraged because of your wrath. We are aware that everything that happens to us is happening because you are the origin of everything. 
and when we suffer, when we are in exile, so why is all this happening? I have already said it is a sum of disorientation. Uh, the balance has been disturbed because uh, the Almighty did allow this to happen and because He is doing it. You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. The Almighty is the origin of our suffering, but also we have a certain responsibility. Why? Because the Almighty is watching us. We, by the way, we are in the month of uh, the preparation for Rosh Hashanah. And the tradition says that at Rosh Hashanah, the Almighty uh, lets everybody pass by in front of his face. All of our deeds are in front of the Almighty in a moment. And uh, this is what verse 8 talks about. You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Therefore, people try to prepare, looking at how they live and maybe see where they have to change something in their lives. But the psalmist does not necessarily speak about Rosh Hashanah. He talks about his suffering and the suffering of uh, the nation. As we have already noticed, this psalm has a collective character. It is about us, our. For all our days have declined in your fury, we have finished our years like a sigh. Uh, like a breath, like uh, a sigh. All of our life is uh, happening under your wrath. And the author is not saying in vain, using, is not using these words in vain. He is aware that uh, the destiny that the people uh, hit is the result because the Almighty had wanted it this way. In his world view, there is not the understanding that we have today that it just happened. And as I have already said, that uh, he emphasizes the greatness, the st status as the Creator, his, him being Almighty, uh, his statute as a Creator. He shows that uh, man, as uh, being created, uh, will pass away. And he says, our days are passing by under your wrath. Verse 9, for all our days have declined in your fury, we have finished our years like a sigh, as for the days of our life they contain 70 years, or if due to strength 80 years, yet their pride is but labor and sorrows, for soon it is gone and we fly away. Uh, 
сказали э, перевели э, самое лучшее проект или слава их, да, то есть какое-то великолепие этих дней но заключается у нас здесь в труде и болезни. Можно было бы, наверное, перевести под трудом мучения, страдания, а болезнь какая-нибудь бедствие, э, наверное, какое-нибудь горе. Да? He says, our days, how, how much or how long do we live? 70 years, maybe 80 years. And the best years of those that we really enjoyed is labor and sickness, suffering. Or sorrow, as it's here in the NASB. Disease, suffering, um, un unfortunate. This is uh, the main part of our life. And this is how he describes his life and the life of his people. Who understands the power of your anger and your fury? It seems to be a rhetorical question and the answer should be nobody. In one way, nobody. But on the other hand, he already dis he just described the wrath of the Almighty. So does somebody know or not? But it is about something different. It is about the situation in which the nation finds uh, itself. The, to recognize, to see the end of the wrath. Who can know it? Who can uh, feel it? Verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Usually it is emphasized how only short men lives and that uh, we will pass away. You could also translate, teach us to count our numbers exactly in order to get a heart of wisdom. This also could uh, mean the past. When a person evaluates uh, the life and uh, the suffering and uh, sees how long he actually did live and suffer, verse 13, so he drew, he drew a picture of the Almighty, he showed uh, who the Almighty is, he has uh, shown who man is, uh, and he showed in which situation the nation found itself. And in verse 13, he's speaking directly. O oh Lord, do return and uh, be sorry for your servants. How long will it still last, Lord? Have mercy on us. Oh, satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. There it says, uh, fill us already in the morning with your loving kindness, so that we can rejoice all the days of our life. We want to finish what is in our life right now, the suffering that you allowed to happen. You, the Almighty, you are the origin. But compare yourself with us, you are eternal, 
and we are just like a, a breath, a sigh. Therefore, have mercy, be sorry on us. Loving kindness is the word chesed and is well known and uh, many try to translate it as uh, mercies or it's usually translated as uh, grace. But uh, the word chesed translated with uh, yeah, loving kindness is connected with faithfulness. Like in verse. In verse 1, Lord, you were our dwelling place uh, forever. This is how the author starts. This is uh, the basis the foundation where he wants to return to. Everything has been completely destroyed, but he wants to return to the beginning. Make us glad according in the days you have afflicted us and the years we have seen evil. We have suffered, we have been suffering for so long, so please give us the same amount of time that we can be happy and joyous, uh, happy in the modern day language. Make us okay. Let your work appear to your servants and your majesty to their children. Uh, let your work appear to your servants and your majesty to their children. Now verse 17. And verse 17 uh, connects this with the beginning of the psalm. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. And where is this connection with the beginning? Because, yeah, as it is written in the Russian translation, the Lord our God, and also in the German, the Lord our God, as well as in the English. But in the original, it says Adonai Eloheinu. So, the author returns to the beginning of the psalm. He says, Adonai, Lord, you are our dwelling place from generation to generation. You were our refuge. And in verse 17, and uh, the Lord our God, or let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. First and foremost, this, this psalm, of course, is without doubt a collective prayer. When uh, the nation as a collective is uh, appealing to the Lord if they find themselves in the situation of disorientation 
life uh, is destroyed, there is uh, suffering, and all of this has been abundant in the life of these people. And the people want that there is a return, a return into the ideal uh, situation, the ideal balance. When or if the nation finds their refuge in the Lord. But we can as well use this psalm as we many times do it. When we read the Holy Scriptures, we not only read it what it could have meant in the time uh, then, but we get connected with this text as well. And sometimes in our lives the same situation happens, the situation of disorientation when we are just lost. It can be an individual uh, situation or a collective situation. A war, for example, is the situation where one nation is lost, but it, there is also uh, the possibility for the individual being lost. And then, of course, we can identify quite well with this psalm. Because this psalm is talking to the Almighty, uh, appealing to the Almighty to answer. Because the psalmist wants that the Almighty will take away the suffering, the pain that the people are suffering with. And we are also sometimes in the situation when we really drown in suffering, in uh, sickness, in uh, the physical realm as well as in the spiritual realm, realm. Then we can read this text as well and also speak to the Almighty and also uh, shout unto Him for Him to finish and uh, telling him, yes, you are almighty, but look at me. The Psalms are really good because they are honest uh, with the Almighty. Almighty, have a look at you and look at me. They speak in a very simple way and they speak directly. And the author is aware that he talks to the Creator who is the origin of everything. But it is important to him to be honest. And this also should be our prayer, an honest prayer. When we stand in front of the Almighty, we are disoriented, uh, we are in pain, we suffer physically or on the inside. We have uh, come physically here or we appeared physically, I put on this uh, coat and everybody is looking at me. Uh, what a good looking man, he's feeling well. Alina is wearing a dress, not bad either. But this is something on the outside, something physical. But we have come, what is happening on, in our, or on our inside? Or we did not uh, come here, we are just watching online, dressed nicely or not, this doesn't matter. Suffering, pain can happen on two levels. 
we speak honestly before the Lord. And uh, the goal of our prayer is is the search for the house, for the dwelling place where we can hide. Adonai, Adonai, you were our refuge from generation to generation. This is where the author wants to return to. Because for the author there is no other way out rather than to return to the one who is the origin and the source of everything that he sees. And my wish for all of us is that we are looking for this return, for this coming back. That we know, that we are aware that the Almighty is the one who can really make the point uh, and finish our suffering and tortures. And the most important is that uh, we are honest to our Creator, to our Source. And then, then we have a hope. Adonai, you are our refuge from generation to generation. Then the reality from the past will become the reality of the present. Then our suffering can be uh, terminated and our pain and Adonai is our Lord. Is our God. Amen. Shield,